Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the advanced search query page and how we can actually build up an advanced search query. So you can, you can get to this page by clicking on the advanced button below the uh, search query box on the PubMed homepage. And this is the page that you'll get to. And this is where we will be able to use the keywords that we've generated to try and build up the advanced search query that, we, that will give us the result that we're looking for. And the basis of the advanced search query page is it allows us to add tags to the phrases or keywords that we're using. So essentially, we can tell the search engine where to look for a particular keyword or phrase when it is searching the journal articles. So by default, when you're using the, the main search uh, query box on the home page of PubMed, it will search for whatever keyword or phrase you put in, in all fields of the article. But by doing this, or by having this uh, functionality, we are now able to tell the search engine where to search for certain information. So for example, if we have an author's name and we're looking for journal articles by that particular author, we can add this tag to the author name when we're putting the author name in saying that this is an author name. So we should, the search engine should look for this in the author field of all the journal articles that it's searching for. Other examples are the date of publication or the date when the article was published. Um, other examples are um, uh, text word or titles. So we can say search for this particular phrase or keyword only in the title of an article, search for a phrase or keyword only in the title or abstract, etc. And I'm going to show you and we're going to go through how to actually use these tags to build up our advanced search query page. So this is, an ex this is, a, 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 this is a, a list of all the tags that PubMed allows you to use. So some of them I spoke about before, author, author name, hmm, uh, language, we can say uh, publication date, publication type, text word, title, title or abstract, etc. And we're going to see how we can use this uh, to build up this advanced search query. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually start building up our advanced search query based on the information that we're looking for. Okay. So let's go back to uh, where we were breaking down our search query. Okay. So remember, we said that we would like to review all studies that have linked mutations in FOXP2 to a speech development disorder. Okay. So now we're going to start building up our query one, one at a time using these particular phrases or keywords that we've identified. Okay. So the first thing that we want to see here, and I'm just going to move the, the, this. Um, um, camera out the way. So if we search for Fox P2, we don't add any additional tags and we say search for Fox P2 in all fields and see what we get. And what you'll see here is we end up with uh, 427 results, 427 uh, articles. Okay. If we search for speech development on its own, we end up with 15,000. And if we search for mutation on its own, we end up with 760,000 results. Okay. So this again is not using any of the tags. It's just searching all fields using our particular keywords of interest. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually add them together. So remember using the Boolean, uh, Boolean terms that I spoke about earlier. So now we're going to say, all fields search for Fox B2. We're going to say, in addition to Fox B2, using the AND Boolean operator, in all fields search for speech development, and again using the AND Boolean operator in all fields search for mutation. And what you'll see as you're putting these in, what you'll see is that the uh, PubMed actually starts to build up that search query and shows you what that search query, query should look like if you were typing it out manually. So essentially what the builder has done is prevented you from having to remember all the syntax and the way in which the search query needs to be built up by giving you these drop-down menus to do it. So what you'll see here at the bottom, oh, so, so I forgot to mention, is that this is the history section. So basically this just stores all the searches that you've run for that particular session. Okay, so it's quite useful, okay. So what you'll see now, is for this particular search where we've searched for FOXP2 and speech development and mutation 
you'll see that we're now down to 49 results. So remember, essentially what we're saying is we want articles that in any field, anywhere in the article has either one of those particular phrases or keywords in it. Okay. And if now, if we click on the results, so to get to our results, we click on this 49, and then it'll give us a list of all the results that we've got back, okay? So you'll see first here that we have one to 20 or 49 uh, articles, okay? And what I want to draw your attention to here is again, we have another representation of how the search engine actually builds up the query. So remember we said that we wanted to search for Fox B2, in all fields, okay, and speech, mesh terms or speech, all fields, and growth and development subheadings, etc. So I'm going to be speaking a bit about mesh terms in more detail. But what I want you to see here, or what I want to show you here, is that in this particular search query box, it shows you the tags that have been associated with the particular search terms, and we'll come we'll come back to that a bit later, okay. Um, so this is just, just highlighting all of those fields again and showing you the particular tags that have been associated. So if we look at, this is all fields, uh, mesh terms I'm going to come back to, and I'm going to give you some detail on that. It's saying speech is a mesh term, or speech, all fields, uh, growth and development, subheading, growth and development, all fields, etc. And we'll come back and look at this in a bit more detail later. Okay. <coughs> So now what I want to do is to show you how we can now build up more specific search query or do a much more specific search, but now by using these tags that we have. Okay, so we can say search for this particular information only in a particular part of the article. Okay, so if you look down here in the history, that's what I've done. I've said search for Fox B2 only in the title or abstract of the articles. Search for speech development only in the title or abstract. A search for mutation only in the title of abstract. And you'll see we end up with 387, 897, and 280,000 results. So you can see this is much lower compared to, compared to what we originally had. We had here where we didn't say, we didn't use the tag uh, only in the title of abstract. Okay? So you'll see these are much lower compared to those numbers because now we're saying only search for these terms in the title of abstract. Okay? And again here, I haven't joined them yet. Here, yeah, I've just used them independently, okay? And in the next slide, let's see what happens when we join them. So I just want to move this down a bit again. Um, what we see now is now if we say, search for Fox B2 only in the title of abstract, and speech and development only in the title of abstract, and mutation only in the title of abstract, we see that we narrow down our search results to three. Okay, again, so going back to here, so what I did was I selected from the drop-down menu, title abstract, and I put in our keyword. I selected title abstract, put in the next keyword, title abstract, put in the next keyword. Okay, and you'll see that we get it down to three results. And essentially these should be three results that should be very particular or specific to our search that we, that we requested. Okay, so now if you have a look at it, you'll see that these are the three search results. So the first one is the key regulator for language and speech development. Fox V2 is a novel subset for the simulation. Um, so again, we see it is related to what we were looking for. Uh, second one is Fox B2, Fox B2 mutations in pair auditory motor association learning. This may be related and there might may be some speech development involved there. And then an etiology, etiological Fox B2 mutation causes aberrant striatal activity and alters plasticity during skills learning. So again, Fox B2 mutation related to some sort of development and it might be speech development in this particular article. And it might be that because we said there has to be speech development in the title or abstract, I'm sure if we have a look at the abstracts for these last two uh, entries, we'll find that there is speech development, the term speech development uh, in that particular, in the abstract. And that's why it's actually turned back the results because it's found mutation or Fox B2 or speech development in the title or abstract for these papers. Okay, so hopefully that shows you how, how you can build up very powerful search queries. Number one, by using Booleans to join your, your, your keywords or your phrases together. Number two, by adding tags to limit your search or to, to allow your search to only look at particular parts uh, of the article. Uh, and in that way, generate a very specific results 
based on the, the, the keywords that you've generated from your search question or query. Okay, so in the next uh, lecture, uh, in the next part of this uh, session, I'm going to talk a bit about mesh terms.